Welcome to 8% Club. Dallas, were you a part of a club as a kid? I never was. No, this is my first one. I'm excited. Welcome. This, Welcome I had my own. There was club. just one member, though. Get Very tree, exclusive. We're a treehouse out back for you. Very exclusive. I'm in. You can yeah. hang out in. We got, we got a big topic today. Yeah. I, Leads versus referrals. Okay. Leads versus referrals. Because, and the reason we came up with this topic, we yeah. actually have, uh, what's another word? We have people in the industry that we know. Well, there's, there's companies that, that believe companies, that using leads is uncompliant. Uncompliant. Um, I mean, legit. And then I read on the internet all the time, if you're using referrals, your business is dying. Yep. And so we want to hear from you guys. What is it? Do you use leads? Do you use referrals? Do you admit, do you use a mix? What is up? Welcome to, come on baby, you ready DJ? I'm ready. You guys ready today? You guys ready to call? You guys ready to make some money? I want you guys calling while I'm calling. I want you guys calling me. I want you guys calling other people. A little calling H2O. Fear be gone water. Fear be gone water. Today only on Live Cold Calling with Cody. All right, you guys ready for today's cold calling? We do some final expense calling all the time. And that's what we're doing today in the Secure Agent Mentor Studio. You guys ready to get with it today and make some calls, make some money, some moolah? Hey, today's, today's data, and I'm talking it's going to be some good data. Today's data, yo, yo, what's up, Tony? Today's data, cold calling data, is brought to you by Cole X Data. Brought to you by Cole X data. So you guys want some fantastic, amazing data? I do too. That's why we went to Cole, Cole X data. So. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Brain Power. I am Lauren Askins, the wife of this stud muffin. This is true. I'm Cody Askins. <laughs> and we are bringing the power of the brain to you every Monday at 2 o'clock Central Standard Time. Uh, today we're going to talk about, ain't nobody got time for that, negativity. Hey, welcome to Deal Breakers with Dave and Cody. Give me some. What is up? You man, guys ready I'm for excited. a show, it's man? Be a good day today. Tony, what's up on Facebook? Hey. Let's get it, brother. Awesome. All right, so if you haven't watched the show before, maybe this is the first time you're watching, this show is called Deal Breakers. We're about breaking down the deal. What's keeping That's you right. from getting the deal? What's, what's in your way? What can you overcome? Those types of things. We do live role playing, we, uh, we do sales training, uh, we talk about all kinds of different things that might keep you. Uh, from being successful. Yep. Today's show is about beating the competition. Question with a question. Okay. Um, <clears throat> uh, are you excited about the conference coming up in October? Will you be there? Will you, will you be at the conference, Dave? Do you think I would miss it? Are you more excited about Grant Cardone or Ray Lewis? Are you talking about Ray Lewis, the NFL Hall of Famer? Is he about to be inducted? I thought he already was inducted, wasn't he? Do you think Cardone will steal the show? Have you seen this guy speak before? Do you feel Tim Story will be the best speaker there? Uh, who is Tim Story? I took an extra second. <laughs> who is Tim Story? It, it, it's fun. It's, it's, What's uh, up, DM? It's an exercise. Um, in a sales presentation, you wouldn't do it that way. No, you would, gosh. you know, you would ask one question, two questions. You would get a conversation. Um, the reason why we do it is because too many times we yeah. are trying to think about what we want to say next. Yeah. I want to tell you this. I want to tell you that. Um, and we want to do that. We want to, we want to give all that away, but we should be asking questions and getting engagement from the other person. And so it's an exercise for that. Well, I believe it's uncompliant to say that. Well, That's here's the I thing, believe. though, because it's just, is I it, believe is it's it old fashioned to say stupid stuff. Man. Is it old fashioned to say leads? See, I'm still of the opinion you have to have some referrals. Even a referral's a lead, but a well, lot of agents better. use leads to, that's their entire business, their entire system, and those that don't, 
I mean, I think I think that's why so many agents. I, I love captive models. That's fine. I was a captive agent at one point. Mm -hmm. There's captive companies that believe you should not work leads. And I'm here to tell you, I love everyone, but they are wrong. I think you're right in it to a point, but I think a lot of agents fail because they refuse to invest in their business and they right. won't buy leads. And so they say the way referrals is a cheap way for them to get out of buying leads. Oh, no, no, I don't do that. I just do referrals. Yeah. I just, I don't want to spend any money. So I just do referrals. Um, I think if you are unwilling to invest in your business, then your business is going to die. I really do. I'm, I'm an aggressive individual. It's already half empty. We need, we need to fill that sucker back up. You know, why are so many agents scared to put this thing on right here and to press talk to people? What's up, James? Why are so many people struggling with picking this thing up and talking to people? Okay. I'm not going to make up the aliens came or something like that. Okay. The power of no is not greater than the power of yes. Dude, I like that, bro. It's a uh, look within rather than without. Dude, Robert, I need, I need help with every aspect of my business too, brother, which is why I'm doing this with you guys because I learned just as much from the comments and questions as I do from me actually physically making calls. So someone's going to say, hey, I don't want to talk to you. I'm no good. I'm, you know, I, I'm excited. I, I don't love you. I love you. I don't, you know, whatever. Uh, when that happens, just realize that I always, okay, I create the expectation myself. I'm going to call, and this is going to go well, but it's live on camera. It's different every time I do it. No clue how it's going to go. That, that's part of the beauty. But as long as you realize that, hey, when you call people, people may say, I'm not interested. They may say, do not call me. They may hang up on you. As long as you go into it with that attitude, like, who cares? You know, have a goal, but expect that people are going to, hey, hello, I'm looking for Frederick. Hey, sir, the, hey, hey, this is Cody. Hey, we're calling because you may qualify for a new state-approved final expense plan. Uh, did we get that new information to you yet? No. Yes, sir, you're welcome. Do, do you know if we got the new information to you yet? Hey, hey, w wouldn't it be nice if these were tougher? Am I right? <laughs> give us some, give us some Call, objections. Oh, okay, good, good, good. Call me another time. Call me another time. So this is you calling, um, call me another time. Right now is not a... Right now is not good. I've got a screaming baby in the background. I've got uh, grilled cheeses on the, <laughs> in, the, in the kitchen that I'm cooking right now. Now is not a good time. Will you call me another time? Perfect. I'll be super brief. I'll be in your area on Friday. Should I go ahead and drop that off in the morning or the afternoon? Mm -hmm. Because when that happens, there's the, there's, there's the time of they answered the phone. Mm -hmm. If it was their daughter that they were talking to, would they take an extra few seconds, even though they were burning the grilled cheese, right. Right. you know, spanking the baby and watching Oprah? Mm -hmm. Like, they would still mm -hmm. take a second, mm -hmm. right? So I'm going to take a few seconds, mm -hmm. let them know, hey, I'll be super brief. Because, but if we pause, if we don't know what to say, yeah. if we just agree and, like, then it's accept. over. If we agree yeah. and accept, if we become reasonable and accept their reason, then it's over. You've got to, you've got But to if we say, hey, I understand, I'll be super brief, just ask a question. Walk right around it. So I'm going to give you five things today while we draw two of how you can turn negatives into positive or training your mind, the power of the brain, to think positively instead of negatively. Because unfortunately in this world we're in today, there's a, a lot of negatives to be negative. That's a good way to put it. Yeah. So um, point number one would be set reasonable goals. Now, we think dream big, make it unrealistic, yes. But under those big goals, like never we talked be, about. Never be reasonable. Never, right? never be reasonable. You got to have some stepping stones that you can achieve to help you gain that positive feeling. Hey, I kept him on the phone for about an extra four to five seconds by jumping in quick. What's up, Kashif? Dude, I normally, I normally will talk to about, I'll normally get a lead after about talking to about four, five, six people maybe. Uh, last week it was the very first call. By jumping in and him saying, hey, I'm not interested. Perfect, Frederick, I get it. Did we get the new information to you yet? Do you know if we dropped it off? Do you know if you got it? Well, I, I don't know. Uh, that, that kept him on the phone for a second. Oh, oh, and then, obviously, he hung up because he didn't want to talk. But you got to be quick to try to keep them on the phone and realize that you will get objections. And they don't really mean it. Like, when he says he's not interested, what does he really mean? He don't mean he's not interested. He means something else because he doesn't know if he's interested or not. He has no clue. Turn pro 
problems and the challenges. You know, how can you grow from this negative situation, you know? Hey, James on YouTube, I, yeah, um, right. I see that you say n newer agents should start smaller, maybe. That's a very valid point because up, the James? insurance agency can, insurance industry, excuse me, can be super overwhelming. So figuring out what your niche is and where you should go is a lot. So yeah. taking that small step back and realizing this is what I want to focus on this week. You know, I need to see 10 people. I need to, you know, whatever. You have to set those small goals to help you figure out your big ones. Hey, hello, I'm looking for Alice. Okay, is this your husband? Is this your husband? Is this Mr. Rainbow? Okay, perfect, buddy. Hey, uh, do you know if we got you guys the new uh, final expense information yet? That's why we were calling her. Okay, excellent. Okay. Well, our state licensed field underwriter would just like to give you a call back to provide you with the new information. I'm assuming a call back is okay, right? Okay. No, no you're, you're good, buddy. Thank you so much. What's up, Aaron? Yeah, uh, our state licensed field underwriter would just like to give you a call back in the next couple days to provide you with the new information. I'm assuming a call back is okay, right? Okay. Excellent. And, and are you guys aware of, uh, how long ago was that? Are you aware of, of, of uh, any changes in, in, in the new information? It's been a couple years. Okay. When's the best time for a callback, would you say, buddy? Would you say like mornings, afternoons, or? You don't, okay. Uh, did, now, when you covered, when you got everything covered, did you go through like a funeral home and prepaid it? Did you go through a life insurance policy? How did you handle that? Lawyer in a funeral home. That's good. Excellent work, man. Awesome job. Okay. I guess you have to start to prepare and, and yeah, and, and do that. Um, okay. Uh, w would, a, would, a, uh, would a call back, uh, just to make sure that you have any new information, would a call back make sense? No worries. Perfect. I appreciate your time. I appreciate you being so kind. Thank you, sir. Bye-bye. The, the only thing that is keeping you from being more successful mm -hmm. is your version of yourself. Yep. And and so you're really competing against yourself and you need to beat uh, the person you were yesterday, or the person you were five minutes ago. Because you really have no cap. You really have no limit on your potential. Man, I get so fired up about that, even with our sales guys here. If you yeah. acknowledge something, then it becomes an issue. And I'm not talking about ignoring things. We didn't ignore the issue. No, no, no. But we didn't we didn't acknowledge in the fact that that's, oh, I'm so sorry you don't have any money. I mean, <laughs> yeah, because yeah. E even if you said that, yeah. and then you asked me, well, you say you don't have any money, how, you know, let's put a number to it, mm -hmm. they can't. You can't find your golf hat. I don't know where my golf hat is Where'd you put it? Or, Where'd or, you put or, it? Or, or uh, Sunday when I said I couldn't find my shorts. Yes, your golf shorts, and they were right where you left them. Yeah, this is true. On your side of the bed. Anyway. But just when they're inside out, they look like swimming trunks instead of golf shorts. So, you know, it's not my fault <laughs> that they didn't look like the right shorts. <laughs> right, Bailey? Did you leave them inside out when you took them off? Oh, I'm sure I did. So how is that my fault? <laughs> I didn't say it was anybody's fault. <laughs> okay, anyway. But so it was just a good one, though. 8% nation. Seeing all this stuff. Getting to hear from these kind of people, I want to break down the, the, the I want to break down both days real quick because a lot a lot of people are asking me, hey, what am I going to get? What am I going to learn? Is it going to be worth it? Day um, day one and day two. Day one in the morning is all about becoming a marketing master. Hearing from some of the best marketing minds in the business. That's in the morning on day one, and we'll make sure that that's the best marketing couple hours that you ever hear in your entire life. Mm -hmm. Day one afternoon, the PM version of day one, is all about living an ideal life. Taking the life you have now and making it better than it is. Becoming a better you, living an awesome life. Getting to the life that is the most ideal and the life that you want. Day two gets even better. Day two AM, AM in the morning on day two before lunch is all about Million Dollar Sales Summit the specific sales strategies, tips, and techniques that you can use to blow up your brand, to become a freaking beast in this industry. Day 2 p.m., we finish it off because day 1 p.m., we finished with Tim Story and Ray Lewis. Day 2 p.m., 
is all about blowing up your brand, blowing up your business. And we finish with a couple of the best at it, Coach Michael Burt and Mr. Grant freaking Cardone to finish off day two. How about those couple of days for 8% Nation? I want to see you there. I want to hang out with you. I want to get to know you. And I know the value will be there. That I can assure you. People that don't like leads, the common excuses are they're garbage. Every lead I buy, nobody's There's home. There's a lot. It's because I, and you and I There's have got this too. There's another school of thought there too. Well, but they're garbage because I call these people and these people think they're winning a free iPad because they clicked on something online. Okay, and that, uh, and, and in that case, they normally are. Yeah. But there's another, there's another side of this coin that, that, that why companies think that you shouldn't work leads. Well, there's, 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 there's crappy lead vendors, mm -hmm. but also I can give you some names if you want. A majority of agents don't properly know how to work. How leads. to work a lead? So naturally, leads suck and leads never work. I know agents making 750k a year, a million dollars a year. I know companies of a few partners that are making eight yeah, figures but, a year so, using leads. But a referral-based guy is going to say, "How much are they spending on those leads?" The, trust me, the ROI is worth it. Well, because you can't say I'm only going to work referrals and I'm going to write two thousand dollars a week. You may have some big weeks, but you're going to have a lot of goose eggs along the way, and then you're going to end up felling. You're going to end up broke. You're going to end up be begging me to, you know, work in the leads department here. Learn to really take a step back and find the um, good. My next point would be surround yourself with people who are reminders the or, you. you know, leave little reminders about yourself. Like we have these cool canvases throughout our office. The yeah. mission, the one above my desk is the mission to help every insurance agent in the world. And that one is so important because that is our mission up, and, and that's the why we do what we do. Hey, Miss Judy. Hey, this is Cody. Hey, we were calling because you may qualify for a new state approved final expense plan. Do you know if we got you the new information yet? Okay, absolutely. Let me ask you a couple quick questions and we'll take you off our list, okay? No, it didn't work. Take, her, t t take me off your list. This is one phrase that you guys can use, and especially when I'm calling leads. I'm doing cold calling. It still works sometimes too. But when I'm calling leads, this phrase works really well. Hey, 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 take me off your list. Uh, perfect. Let me ask you a couple quick questions and we'll take you off our list. And then I just keep going and start asking questions. And before you know it, we set the appointment. Um, that works really well with leads. I would say about 90% of agents would do this right here. And if you're watching, take some freaking notes because I'm about to revolutionize your business with one single phrase. Okay. They get a lead and they say, hey, the, the, the lead vendor sends them a lead and says, hey, this person had interest in life insurance. They responded, they wanted a free quote for life insurance. Okay. Then you, the 90% of agents call and say, hey, Betty, my name is Cody. I'm the life insurance guy. How are you today? You re requested a free quote to buy life insurance. Mm -hmm. No, I didn't. Yeah, and it's, yeah, they're going to hang up. It's dead. Like, it's over. Yeah, like, it's that's over. just a horrible way to mm -hmm. open that up. Yeah. But those are the agents that just jump in. They ignore pauses. They ignore objections. They don't say that they want to buy something yet. You, they don't even know. You don't mm -hmm. know if they want to buy anything. You right. don't know. You don't. You just met them. Hey, my name, hey Betty, my name's Cody. You, we're getting back to you. You requested some information about final expenses. I have the information. I'll be out there on Friday. I'll be in your neighborhood. Should I drop it off in the morning or the afternoon? Okay, let's do it's this. It's not rocket science. Let's, let's role play. 90% of agents are the other side of the coin, though. I want to be Betty. Some days, you, you, I mean, you, you can, every appointment's fantastic. You'll make every single sale. And then other days, maybe, it, maybe it's difficult. And so that's kind of the ebb and flow of sales, calling. But as long as you realize that and you're consistent, because some people will say, well, I tried it for 30 minutes and I gave up, you know. I've been doing it like, 15 minutes, right? More, normally I've got a lead. Today I haven't. Some will, some won't, so what? Who's next? Coach Michael Burt, a super coach and entrepreneur who has helped millions of people achieve their goals. Cody Askins, CEO of Secure Agent Mentor and insurance sales expert who will show you how to think bigger and grow your business. And many more of the top minds from the insurance industry. Join us in Nashville, Tennessee at Nissan Stadium. Get your tickets now at 8percentnation.com.
Welcome back. If you haven't checked out 8percentnation.com, please do. It's on the screen below. 8percent spelled out nation.com. We are That's a doing long URL. 8percent spelled out nation.com. Bloody bloody blah. You see it on the screen though. Right? <laughs> and welcome back. You. You are too much that, for me. Gonna, Did you wake up on the right side of the bed cuz that's my next point. I don't know. I've been pretty fun on this show. Because you've so been a whatever little side feisty I woke up on, we probably want to keep that up, right? I don't know, but you've been a little feisty and wild today. I don't know. Did I wake up on the right side of the bed? 90% yes. of agents think that leads are garbage because your ability to work a lead may, in fact, be garbage. I had a uh, car salesman one time, best line I've ever heard. I said the same exact thing. I come up. And who just looks at a car? I'm not just looking. I'm not driving on a lot just for. But I time. said, I said, I'm just looking. He said, Awesome. I love cars. Let's look together. <laughs> and I'm like, Okay. All right. That's, wow. that's brilliant. Let's Dude. look together. Um, wake up on the right side of the bed. That means getting your mind right to. Oh, really? That was like a. I didn't yes. realize that was a point. I just of course it's a point. Being... Look at that. Look Bam. at that. Bam. Blow. Drop the bomb. I'm I like, just what is did she doing that. Over here? And then it's, it's, it's right into. Point four. It is. We talked about people giving up. Uh, we feel like 92% of agents fail because some agents give up way too easily, which is why we're putting on this conference, why we're bringing people like Grant Cardone, Ray Lewis, Coach Michael Burt, Tim Story, and a lot of industry vets and experts into Nissan Stadium, Titan Stadium in Nashville. You guys can see it on the screen below. Make sure you get a ticket to that. I want to hang out with you. I want to take your game to the next level, your business to the next level, your mental, your mindset to the next level, your goal setting to the next level. That's what I want to do because I know that agents fail not, they don't fail because they got a lack of training. Agents don't fail because they got a lack of leads. Agents don't fail because they were paid too low of commission. Agents don't fail because they only sold for one carrier because I made 117 k in eight months at 19 years old, door knocking with one carrier. My commission sucked. I had one carrier. I didn't have leads and I didn't have any training. So there you go. And I did just fine. No leads, no training, one carrier. My commission sucks and my rates that I was selling weren't the lowest that they could have been. But be because I was able to succeed, was because I had the mindset that no matter what, I am not giving up, I'm not failing, I will not quit, I will do whatever it takes. I had some rough days. I had some rough days where I'd door knock 120 doors in a senior housing area and I wouldn't sell nothing. Well, a lot of, a lot of agents, they don't have to work leads because they think, hey, I need, and I, I used to be at fault too. You get a lead and they say, hey, they had an interest in life insurance. So you say, hey, mm -hmm. Betty, I saw you wanted to buy some life insurance. And that's how you open up a script. Yeah. Like, dude, if I said that, leads wouldn't work either. 